This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this beautiful, cool Sunday morning as we gather together to worship the Lord. We gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. We gather this morning to fellowship one with another, to care for one another, and to make a difference in one another's lives. We continue to reach out to make that difference. We gather today as God's wonderful people to worship Him. Hymn number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Sunday in Lent, and we're talking about the temptation of Jesus. And for those of you uh, that's up in school, and this little fella probably hadn't had any tests yet, but uh, the day's coming when he'll have to have some tests. I know you two probably have tests on a regular basis, and what happens when you make uh, when you get all the answers correct? You get a A or A plus, and um, then if you don't do so good, then the grade is not quite as good. Well, temptation is sort of like a testing when we are able to withstand temptation. When 
we don't lie to help ourselves from being in trouble, then God would give us an A+. Plus. If when we get angry, we don't hit our brother or sister, then God would give us an A+. Plus. If we didn't know the answer to a question and we didn't look over our fellow student's shoulder to see the answer, then God would give us an A+. Plus. But then if we did, if we told a lie, or if we looked over a shoulder at somebody else's uh, grade, or if we were to um, do something against our brother or sister because we got angry, then God would give us a failing grade. God wants us to be A students. God wants us to face temptation and be able to withstand that temptation. And so this morning, our prayer is that God will give us the strength and, and the word that when we are facing those temptations, that we can do like Jesus, we can say to Satan, flee from me, because you're not going to cause me to be tempted. You're not going to cause me to fall into temptation. And so this morning, when we think that we are facing temptation, and we think that we don't have the strength to be able to withstand that temptation, we go to God, and we ask God to give us the strength and the power to resist Satan and to resist that temptation that we might continue to be an A student. Let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious children. And Heavenly Father, when we face the temptations of life, Heavenly Father, may each and every one of these be an A student. Heavenly Father, may they be able to resist that temptation and Heavenly Father, may they look to you for that strength from day to day. Heavenly Father, continue to walk with these and guide them and direct them. And Lord, we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to continue to remember all those that are sick and those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to continue to be with each and every one of these and to touch these in a mighty way. Uh, for those of you that know Miss Jessie Hughes, uh, she is going into hospice house, uh, was supposed to go in yesterday. Uh, we just ask the Lord to continue to be with that family and continue to touch them and hold them close. Uh, some of you uh, know Joe Owens that was raised there in, in the Owens community. Uh, he passed away last night, and so that's uh, Dotsy Clayton's uncle. And so uh, we um, ask the Lord to continue to be with that family and touch them. And we ask the Lord to continue to be with uh Eugenia and Paul and Aubrey and, and the whole family and just encircle each and every one of them with his loving arms and hold him close as he continues to give them faith, strength, and courage for each day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, we do come with heavy hearts for all those that are going through difficulty, those that are facing surgery, those that are not sure what might lie ahead, for all those families that bereaved. Lord, you know each and every one of these situations. Lord, we just ask that you might touch each and every one of these, that you might walk with these in a mighty way that you might encircle each and every family with your loving arms and that you might hold them close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for walking with us day by day. For giving us that assurance that you would never leave us nor forsake us. But you would be with us always, even unto the end. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that need that touch today. Heavenly Father, that you might be with them in a mighty way. And Heavenly Father, we pray for each and every one of these precious lives that are gathered here today. For Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. Lord, you know what each and every family is going through. You know the struggles that we face and the ups and downs of our lives. And Lord, we just ask that you might be in the very midst of each and every one of these, that you might guide us and direct us and hold us close. And Heavenly Father, that you might meet our needs. And Heavenly Father, we'll continue to give you the praise and the glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for it is in him that we find hope for each day. In him, we find life and we find it so abundantly. In him we find that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we pray for your precious Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit might fill each and every one of our hearts, that your Holy Spirit might guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go that your will might be done in each and every one of our lives as we are drawn closer to you and closer to one another. Heavenly Father, may your spirit go with us throughout this service, that everything we say and everything we do might bring glory and honor to your holy name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and the prayer that he taught his disciples. And Heavenly Father, we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 395, Take Time to Be Holy. Oh, 
I saw the reading today is found on page 769. We're reading from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. God praise shall continuously be in my mouth. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I saw the Lord who answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to God and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor cried out, and the Lord heard, and saved them out of all their troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear God has no wound. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. The ears of the Lord hears their cry. The face of the Lord is against evil doers. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them. The Lord keeps all their bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in God will be condemned. announcements. Remember our administrative council meeting next Sunday at 5. And then uh, Sunday, March the 19th, we will have our covered dish meal after the worship service. Bring your favorite dishes and join us for a time of fellowship. Uh, the church will provide the meat. So keep that in mind as we fellowship together around God's table on the third Sunday in the month. I'd like to share this card with you this morning. On behalf of the Emma Reese Cromer family, we want to thank each of you for your many prayers, the food tray, the love offering, and thoughts during our daily grieving. Love, living each day through faith. Paul and Eugenia, Patty, Eric, and Aubrey. We continue to keep them in our prayers and ask the Lord to strengthen them from day to day. May we worship the Lord with our tithes and our offering.
Father, we truly thank you for these gifts and those that have given them. Heavenly Father, may they be received for the uplifting of your kingdom as we continue to make that difference in the lives of people all around us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Gospel of Matthew, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike you, your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain 
and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God, and him only shall I serve. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended unto him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life into your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come today to hear that bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our subject today is temptation will surely come. For each and every one of us, we will face temptation and testing practically every day in our lives. Temptation and testing will come in all shapes and forms. Temptation may come in that first drink that we ever took. Temptation may come in that first cigarette that we ever smoked. Temptation may come in that first joint of marijuana. Temptation may come in some form of drugs. Or temptation may simply come in a lie that we tell to save ourselves from trouble. Temptation may come when we simply look over the shoulder of a fellow student to copy their paper. Temptation may come when we get angry and we say things that we ought not say or we do things that we ought not do. Temptation and testing comes in many ways, and it comes often. But temptation and testing did not just begin yesterday. Temptation and testing has been around for a long time. For when God created Adam, he placed him in the garden and he gave him full reign over that garden. He could eat from all the trees in the garden except the one in the midst of the garden. God saw that Adam was lonely and needed a helpmate. And so he put him to sleep and took a rib and created Eve gave him a companion, placed them there in the garden and allowed them to watch over the garden, to eat from the fruit of the trees in the midst of the garden, except the tree in the center of the garden. And they did eat and they enjoyed themselves and they walked in the garden in the coolness of the morning God came down and walked with them and there was perfect harmony and perfect peace in the garden. But then the serpent came on the scene and the serpent said to Eve, Eve, you know that God has given you free reign over the garden. And what about that tree there in the midst of the garden? Doesn't that fruit really look good? You know it would really be delicious. And he says, but God says that we will die if we eat from that tree in the midst of the garden. Satan says, Eve, you know, 
God wouldn't do that to you. You're not going to die. God just knows that if you eat from that tree in the midst of the garden there, that you, your eyes will be open and you will be as wise as he is. You will know everything just like he knows. And Eve looked at that tree and she looked at that beautiful fruit and she did eat of it and she did not die. And so when Eve offered it to Adam, he figured that Eve didn't die so he would eat of the fruit. And both of them ate from the fruit in the midst of the garden. Sin came into their lives. They lost their innocence there in the garden. For the scriptures said that their eyes were open and they recognized for the first time that they were naked and they put fig leaves together and clothed themselves. Somebody said that they even argued over who was on where the plants in the family. But there in the midst of the garden, they lost their innocence. They lost that intimacy between the two of them Things would never be the same again. And they lost their integrity with God because of what they had done there in the garden. And because sin took place, God had to punish them. And he said to the serpent, Thou shalt crawl on thy belly and eat of the dust all the days of your life. And he said to Eve, in childbirth you will bring forth pain. And he said to Adam, you shall work by the sweat of your brow. And it will no longer be the same, for there will be weeds in the garden and you will have to hold, and you will not be able to control all the weeds in the garden. Life will be difficult because of the sin that you've committed. But most of all, he said to Adam and Eve, I'm casting you out of the garden you no longer will have the free reign of the garden you will no longer have that fellowship that you once had and so because of sin they had to pay the price and so when sin comes into our lives we too pay the price for that sin the scripture said that the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. And it was there that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. And Satan came to him and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, turn the stone into bread. And Jesus said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but he shall live by every word that flow from the mouth of God. And so Satan wanted to make it even better for Jesus. And so he took him into the holy city and he led him up into the top of the temple. And he says, it's written that you can jump down and you can make a big scene of yourself and people can see how mighty and powerful you are and the angels will catch you and your foot will not hit the stone. 
And Jesus said, the scripture says, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so Satan takes him up into a high mountain and he shows him all of the kingdoms of God, of, of the world. And he says, you can have all these kingdoms. You can be all powerful and almighty if you will just simply bow down and worship me. But Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, for thou shalt serve the Lord thy God and serve him only. And Satan would leave for a season, but surely Satan would come again but Jesus Christ was willing to go to the cross at Calvary and shed his blood and give his life that our sins might be forgiven. In Romans 5, it says that by one man's sin, sin came into the world and we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But by one man's righteousness and through his shed blood on Calvary's cross, our sins are forgiven. This morning, God wants us to accept him and to allow Jesus Christ to live in our hearts. And he wants to have that personal relationship with us that we might not sin. God wants us to be that A student. God wants us to resist temptation. And God wants us to walk in his way and stay in his word that we can face the temptations and testing that will come our way. But sometimes we slip and sometimes we backslide and sometimes we sin when we don't mean to. But we don't have to live in that guilt because Jesus Christ is there for us. And Jesus Christ shed his blood and gave his life that our sins might be forgiven. If we will confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous and, and will forgive us of our sins and all of our unrighteousness. Apostle Paul says that, you know, there's one thing that I do. I put all those things behind me and I press towards the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And folks, that's what you and I are to do when we sin, when we come short of the glory of God. We don't live in that sin, but we ask God to forgive us and we repent of that sin and we put it in the past and we move on to serve God to be the very best that we possibly can be. God wants us to be his children. Temptation and testing will surely come. But if we stay in the word and we stay with God through the Holy Spirit, we will be able to resist those temptations and we will be able to face the testing of time and we will be able to do the work of God's kingdom. 536 as we sing precious name verses 1 2 and 4 1 2 and 4 536 precious name
Heavenly Father, these are your precious children. You took their place on Calvary's cross. You became sin that their sin might be forgiven. Heavenly Father, draw each and every one of these closer to you and closer to one another as we continue to make that difference in the lives of those around about us. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.